On today's episode, the moon claims another victim, SpaceX has a new plan for Starship, and the Boeing Starliner experiences another setback. This week, a small lunar lander from Japan became the latest in a rapidly growing list of failed attempts to reach the surface of the moon, a once barren and desolate place that is quickly becoming a spacecraft graveyard. The ill-fated lander, known as Resilience, is from a Japanese startup called iSpace, and is part of their Hakuto-R series, one that has attempted a moon landing before and also met with disaster along the way. Resilience had been traveling from the Earth to the Moon for about five months before it was finally ready to complete its final approach. It actually launched on the same Falcon 9 rocket as another lander, the Firefly Blue Ghost. Leaving the Earth on January 15th, Blue Ghost took a more direct path to the Moon and ultimately became the most successful American lunar lander in decades. While Blue Ghost was making history, Resilience was taking a scenic route to the Moon. One focused on conserving energy and maximizing safety. It's a sound theory, but as space enthusiasts tuned in to watch the landing, what we saw was less than ideal. A little over one minute before the expected touchdown, telemetry disappeared from the on-screen display, leaving just an animation of the lander for us to watch. The animation continued for a few seconds before that too dropped out, and the camera cut to a live image of our flight director. He was sitting there with his hands on his face, and it was clear something had gone terribly wrong. The rest of the team also became very somber, and you could basically see the hope draining from their bodies. Some people stayed at their post looking through data while the rest paced around the room anxiously. It was only after the stream ended that any official word was given about the lander's fate, which came as no surprise. Resilience had been lost during the landing attempt and had smashed into the moon. While teams are still looking through data to find a definitive cause for the vehicle's failure, it's clear that something went wrong with the laser rangefinders aboard the craft. The rangefinders, which measure the distance from the surface to the moon using lasers, is essentially the same LiDAR technology that you'll find in many autonomous vehicles and robots. This sensor experienced a glitch where the rangefinders didn't return their measurements in time, which delayed essential data from being received by the flight computer. When the rangefinders eventually produced those measurements, it was too late, and resilience didn't have sufficient time to slow down, and it smashed into the moon at breakneck speeds probably something in the neighborhood of 50 meters per second. iSpace would describe this event as, quote, a hard landing. This failure would be unfortunate for any small company trying to reach the moon. However, it was especially bitter for iSpace, as this was their second attempt at the Silver Globe. Their first mission ended when the lander ran out of fuel while still high above the surface and made another, quote, hard landing. This is a real shame, because the Hakuto R lander is actually a very capable machine on paper. The lander has eight sides and almost resembles a rounded cube with solar panels. Hakuto R has seven engines beneath it, six of which are used for maneuvering and another for descent. This is held up by four wide landing legs. This flight, as well as the previous one, were both meant to prove Hakuto R as a viable landing system. Now, the future of the company and their design hangs in the balance. We can't help but think back to the Intuitive Machines IM2 mission earlier this year, also the second landing attempt for a small company with dreams of reaching the moon, and also experienced a hard landing that was largely blamed on a laser altimeter, which is interesting. By contrast, the Firefly Blue Ghost did not rely on a LiDAR system and instead used a camera vision-based AI algorithm for its primary navigation. Now obviously, Firefly will have to repeat their landing success to ultimately prove that it was more than just good fortune, but at the same time, repeatable failure would appear to show more than just bad luck. There is something wrong with the approach that most modern tech companies are taking when it comes to landing on the moon. Speaking of which, Elon Musk's SpaceX has ambitions to land their Starship rocket as far away as the planet Mars, and we've just got an interesting look at the company's new plan to meet that goal. 
Ultimately, the success of Starship is going to rely on an incredibly high volume of launches, which is going to require a large amount of infrastructure to be built here on the Earth. They need more launch pads, which in turn also have to support Starship landings as well, and the first step in accomplishing this will be to expand Starship operations from Texas to Florida. Of course, SpaceX is still very much in the process of figuring out how to fly their Starship successfully, but it seems like they aren't willing to wait to build an empire to support that rocket, if and when it does become operational. The FAA has just revealed that SpaceX plans to build not one, but two more Starship launch pads. However, these new pads won't be built at Starbase. For this, we have to move halfway across the country to Florida, where the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station is located. This is where SpaceX wants to convert an existing launch complex to a pad capable of supporting up to 76 launches a year, with a landing of both Starship and Super Heavy for each launch, adding up to 152 landings per year. The project involves constructing launch and landing pads, propellant storage, and other infrastructure, along with widening the